Technical traders use indicators to identify market patterns and trend reversals. Most of these indicators fall into two separate categories, leading indicators and lagging indicators. And stick to the end with me, I'll show you two popular leading indicators and two popular lagging indicators and how you can use these for your precise entry in the market. <laughs> Now, before I can show you how to use these indicators, I must elaborate what they are. So a leading indicator is an indicator that will help you spot a trend reversal before it even happens. So it's predictive in order to tell you that, hey, price is overbought or oversold, and it may be time to sell or it may be time to buy because of the trend is ending. So that would be ideal specifically for trend traders or swing traders, those who plan on being in the market for a while and they want to get in at the best possible price. A lagging indicator is actually opposite. It confirms confirms that a trend has already taken place. Now, a con with the lagging indicator is that it's too late, right? But there are many pros to lagging indicators and in which we'll get in in just a moment. So again, what are the pros for a leading indicator? It'll give you the signal of a reversal. It'll tell you that price is overbought or oversold. And so oftentimes, if you were to get in, when it tells you that price is overbought or oversold, you can sell and you can get in at the very top of that trend. Who wouldn't want to get in at the very top of the trend? Now, the con for this is that there can be fake outs. So although this indicator can tell you that, hey, price is overbought, so it's time to sell, there can be plenty of fake outs in the market, which means that the market makers will move the market and continue to push it in that trend direction. So you don't want to be caught out in that fake out, but this can be a pro for a lagging indicator. One of the pros for a lagging indicator is that it tells you that a reversal has already happened. It's confirmed. So if you were to use a lagging indicator for a trend reversal, you can say, hey, I can get in, although I'm late to the party, but at least I know when the trend has happened. So there's a con to that as well. You can enter too late with a lagging indicator, meaning that the trend has already happened. So you may have to wait for a pullback before a continuation. If you've been following us for a while and you're new, we have plenty of videos about pullbacks and continuations and how to trade, but that can be a con for a lagging indicator. So there may be something to using both at the same time when you're entering the market. But we don't use indicators at BK Trading Academy unless it's used for confluence. And confluence simply means that it's confirmation as to what we're seeing with our price action and technical analysis. So I'm going to deep dive into this a bit so that you can understand and how you can use these leading and lagging indicators for your trading as confluence, not as a way, a means to trade solely on that indicator. So let's look at a chart. I'm going to throw in some indicators and I'll break it down for you. Let's get into it. So first indicator we're going to look at for a leading indicator is going to be the RSI. RSI stands for Relative Strength Index. So the Relative Strength Index is a momentum indicator, which traders can use to identify whether a market is overbought or oversold. And so when the RSI gives a signal, it's believed that the market will reverse. This provides a leading sign that a trader should enter or even exit a position. And the RSI is an isolator. So it is shown on a scale from zero to 100. If the RSI is above 70, that will tell you that the market is overbought and we need to sell. And if the RSI is below 30, this tells us that the market is oversold and that we need to buy. So let's go ahead and look at Euro GBP. All right. So what you'll do is go ahead and click indicators here and click relative strength index. You will see it right here below. And if you go ahead and click the settings tab right here, this will pop up and you can change the colors of your bands or whatever you like to. I just have kind of a purple and gold here. So for my RSI strength, I have 14. The, the source is closed and my standard deviation I have listed as two. And so you can set this the way you want to. I'm not here to kind of tell you exactly how to set it. I'm just want to show you an example of how you can enter and exit and how this is a leading indicator. Hey, guys, I want to take this time to say thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment if you haven't already. And I want to emphasize on the comment and the likes. Oftentimes, we'll get communication from you either through our academy or through email or any other means of communication. You will say you enjoyed a video, except we don't really see the comments sometimes. So if you can do that, please comment only if you receive value from this and if you're really understanding and receiving the education that we provide you. Again, we thank you guys for watching. Back to the video. So remember what I said, over above 70 is considered overbought, below 30 is considered oversold. So when you see price above 70 or close to it, then you want to sell. So for example, if I scroll over here, you can see that this line here is way above 70, it's actually 77, and then it starts to head down. 
This is following the chart right here, these candles. And as soon as it price gets to here above 70, it heads down for a ton of pips. So from up here, let's just say from here to where it stopped over 356 pips, right? And it follows this here. So you can trade it once price is overbought or oversold. Same in the opposite direction. Let's go to this here where it's below 30. It actually comes down to about 26 and then it shoots up meaning that it's oversold and you would typically want to buy. So that's how you would typically use this here. It's telling you that a trend is reversing. Now, again, there's pros and cons to this. There can be fake outs in which it can come below 30. However, price can continue to drop. So you want to be sure that you're aware of things like that. And this is why we couple this with price action. So I can see that price is below 30 here. That means that right here, that means we're looking at right here. If I draw a straight line up, this is where price is currently at, right? So you want to look left to see if price was there before and when it shot up, right? Or shot down. So we can see price was here before and it made a major move to the downside, right? Right here. And it made a major move to the upside. So within this area, that's why we have this highlighted red. Anywhere within this area, price action is telling us that it's time to make a move either to buy or to sell. And we throw this RSI on as an indication or confluence to tell us and to confirm that price is overbought or oversold and we would enter the market. So this is a popular leading indicator that we can use for trend reversals. You can use this actually on any time frame, the daily, the weekly, the 15 minutes. Now, the higher the time frame, the longer the price may take to get to where you want to. However, you will get more pips or more profits when you enter on a higher time frame. The lower the time frame, you're simply scalping or intraday trading, meaning that you can get to your destination or your exit or your take profit faster. You just may not get as many pips. All right, so let's go ahead and look at one more leading indicator. All right, guys, so let's look at the stochastic. This is another leading indicator. It's S-T-O-C-H-A-S-T-I-C. -S -S you can type that in the search and trading view. Once I throw that on, you will see this below right here. It looks similar to the RSI if you're new to these indicators, but what this typically is, is that when price is over 80 or under 30, this tells us that the trend will be reversing. The only difference is we have two lines here, which we also have in the RSI. However, the confirmation to enter is when you have one line cross the other line. Now, this is completely customizable. I have mine as an orange and kind of a navy blue here. If you go to settings, you can go ahead and enter that here. My inputs here, again, it's 14. The case smoothing is one. The desmoothing is 3% and so on and so forth. Again, I'm not here to give you the specifics, but you can kind of pause this and screenshot this and take a look at it if you want to copy it. My upper band is set as 80. My lower band is set as 20. My middle is at 50. So me personally, I'm looking for a price going above 80 or below 20, and then I need to see a cross, right? So this is what I'm talking about. As we look in closer here, let's look at this area right here. Right, we see this orange line shooting to the upside. It's above 80, if you look on the right side. And as it shoots down, we're not entering until it crosses this blue line. And if I draw a straight line, you'll see it right here, right? So that's where price is mimicking on the chart. Price is right here. We can see it starts to drop. If I get my measuring tool from here, just to where the drop ends, that's 160 pips. Now, remember, I'm on the daily time frame, so I'm going to get a lot more pips than if I was on the lower time frame. This works on the lower time frame as well if you're scalping or intraday trading. But I personally recommend doing it on the higher time frame so you can see the true trend and not just these micro trends on the lower time frame. So again, that being said here, price is at a level here. It crosses and then it shoots to the downside. That's when you're going to trade it, right? So this is our reversal signal when that orange line crossed this blue line. Same in reverse. Down here below, we can see the blue line starts to cross the orange line and it starts to go up and you'll see price action following that as well. So we don't trade this alone. Like I said, we look at price action. So you have to be an expert in identifying price action in these key levels. Notice I have this red rectangle line here. If I go left for clues, I can see that price right here start to reverse. So that gives me an indication that around this area or this zone, price will reverse again. See how it shot to the downside, came to the area, shot to the downside. Now, notice how I said I want to wait for this blue line to cross the orange line before I get in. That tells me personally that sellers are starting to step in, right? Because if it doesn't, that tells me that false breakout. So this is how you can use the stochastic in avoiding possible false breakouts by making sure that the orange line crosses the blue line coming down. And then at reverse, we want the blue line to cross the orange line to the upside. So that cross will help us 
to feel comfortable to enter that trade. And then when you couple that with price action right here, as I look left for clues, and as I go further left here, you will see further price action. And again, in the future, if price comes to this area, I know that there is a possibility of a reversal as long as my blue line crosses my orange line in my stochastic. So these are two popular leading indicators that we personally use as confluence when we're entering trades. Let's go ahead and take a look at some lagging indicators. And guys, before we continue with the lagging indicators, I want you to show us some love. Seriously, like and subscribe if you haven't already and share this content if you feel that it will help a fellow friend or family member to become better traders. We appreciate you for watching. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the lagging indicators. All right, so a popular lagging indicator is the Bollinger Band. Now, some of you may say, hey, I thought it was a leading indicator. It can be used as a leading indicator, but it's actually a lagging indicator. So the Bollinger Band tool is a lagging indicator. And the reason why is because it's based on a 20 day simple moving average. So the Bollinger Band has three lines. There's two outer lines and one middle line. These outer bands represents the positive and the negative standard deviation away from the SMA and are used as a measure of volatility. So you can use those outer lines as support and resistance or supply and demand. And that middle line is just kind of a median between the two. And you can use that as a way to get out of a trade when price is going your way. You can exit early or you can even use that middle band as a support or resistance line as well. So it can get, get a little confusing and I'm going to show you and break it down right here. So we can go to indicators right here and you'll type in Bollinger Band. So I already have that saved under mines here. And if I go ahead and click this, you will see these three bands. Go to settings here and the length is 20. That's the 20 day simple moving average that I was talking about. Now you can adjust that if you like to and to 30, 40 or whatever you like, but I typically leave it the same as 20. My source is closed. Standard deviation, I have it at 2.5. Sometimes it can be two or three depending. And I'll show you the difference between the 2.5 versus the two and the three. Let me show you really quick. If I do the three here, I want you to look at the bands and you can see that it widens a bit. If I do two, you'll see that it starts to shrink. So typically when price is poking through the bands from the upside, that means that price is overbought and you're expecting for price to drop. So this is where you typically would sell at. So again, from the bottom, when price is poking at the bottom of the bands, this tells us that price is oversold and you would typically buy. Very simple, right? So again, if I were to come back here and go back to my standard deviation and change it, it's up to you where you feel comfortable at. So if I have three on my standard deviation, it's not even touching it. So how would you know when to sell or buy? Now, some people may put three because they're saying, hey, I may take fewer trades, but I know if it's poking through like this here, for example, then I know it must be ripe to sell right here, right? So if it's coming and touching here, it will sell, but I'm going to take fewer trades. Now, if I go back here and let's say if I change this to two, I can see that it's poking through and it continued to push up a little bit higher, right? Even here, it touched, pushed through, came down, but then it continued to push higher. Whereas my three setting, it never even crossed that area right here. It never even touched this here. So I'm taking fewer trades. If I were to change my standard deviation to three, but the probability of price coming down is a lot higher. So I find my fix right here at 2.5, right in the middle between the two. And I think that works for me. All right. So again, here's my resistance band here. Here's my support band here. Here's my middle band. And so typically when you see price coming here, you want to sell and you can get out at the middle band. You don't have to get out at the bottom band. The middle band is safe. And then it, once price gets to the bottom of the band right here, you can exit right here in the middle of the band for a few hundred pips, but depending on what time frame you're in. So this will work on any time frame. Again, I personally like to use it on a higher time frame because it gives me the true trend. So let's look at one more lagging indicator. All right. So one more popular lagging indicator is a moving average. Like this here, we have an SMA simply means simple moving average. And it's simply just one line here identifying the trend, right? Remember a lagging indicator only identifies when a trend has already happened. So for example, we see this line moving up. This tells us we're in an uptrend. Now we can see right here that price started to move down, right? But this line is still moving up and then it moves sideways. This is because we have it listed here as a 50 day moving average. So it tracks the last 50 days and tells us what's happening within the last 50 days. So the trend could already be happening, but the line is late to come down. So we can see that price starts to shoot down, but this line starts to identify it later and then it finally comes down, right? Then we can see price shoot up. The line is lagging, doesn't realize price has shot up way right here. This line is still headed down and then it realizes, hey, the trend is reversed, let's go up. And this is when you would say, hey, I may be interested in only buying at support 
to head to the upside. So it's lagging, but it tells you that we're in an uptrend. And when you're in an uptrend, you want to identify support zones like this here, like this here, this here. When you see this drop, then you want to get in because now you know a push is coming. When you see this drop, you want to get in. Now you know a push is coming. When you see this drop, you want to get in. And now you see a push is coming. So this is ideal for someone who wants to identify a trend. You want to wait for a support zone here and then buy. Same in reverse in a downtrend. You want to wait for resistance zone and sell. So guys, this is really simple. I gave you two leading and two lagging indicators to help you with your entries. Let me know what you think in the comments, guys. Let me know if you use any of these, these indicators. Let me know if you knew if these were leading or lagging. If you have any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer for you. Now, if you're a struggling trader and you're looking for a way to be continuously profitable, let us know. We have an academy that can help you along with other traders in which we teach and we communicate with 24-7. Everything in the description below, guys. I will see you in the next video. I appreciate you guys giving this video a thumbs up up and subscribing and sharing and i will see you in the next video god bless you complaining and wrecking my health i got to watch how i'm treating myself something's got to change